think this um, is why these two movies were really atrocious, yeah. the fact that they were on my list. So, number five for me was Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. I thought the way they portrayed Silver Surfer was pretty much, you know, cartoony. It, it was awful. They portrayed him really badly. They, they could have had so much power to do him in a good light, but they chose not to. I agree. So, you know, that's... Obviously not the worst one on my list. <laughs> so that's number five. Number four is X-Men Origins Wolverine, which is the only comic book movie I have actually turned off. I started watching it. I got maybe less than halfway through it, and I turned it off. The One of the... Uh, I, I can't stand it. Um, now, the only Superman movie I will ever mention, and that's because of lack of storyline... And lack of discipline revolving around the comic books. And that's Man of Steel. You know, the way they portrayed General Zod in there and, you know, everybody else, it was an absolute pile of crap. And this is coming from a guy who doesn't like Superman. Period. And I thought Man of Steel was an absolute disgrace to the storyline of Superman. Now... Yo, my number two, X-Men Last Stand, which I don't need to go any further into it to explain why it was utter crap. Because I've already pretty much uh, explained no, no, no. it. Anyone who has seen it will obviously already know why it was a piece of crap. If you haven't seen it, you're not missing much, so I don't need to explain it to you. And we are two for two. Two for two. We are two for two. Of course, my number one most hated <laughs> comic book movie is the recent absolute disgrace Fantastic Four. See, and that's, you know, that's no surprise there uh, to me. If you've listened to our previous shows over the last if couple you've listened weeks. listened to this entire series, you've known how this man feels about it. <laughs> I hated it before it even came out. Yeah. I just, I find something, I mean, I had been thinking about Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, and there's a lot of stuff in that that was really offensive. I just didn't think it was offensive to, as much to me as what, you know, they went off and did to the Superman and movies. Yeah, uh, that's because you're a Superman fanatic, and I am not. And I've never actually seen Man of Steel. I've, I've heard about it, you know, there's been some stuff that really... Bothered me like Superman actually killing someone, which is something that Superman doesn't actually it, it's do. It's one of his vows of you know not killing. In fact, they went as far as they do a what if comic series where Superman is forced to kill someone, and it grieves him so much that he actually uses gold kryptonite to lose his powers. That's how frustrated he was with it. Yeah, so that movie was an absolute disgrace. Um, top five. Favorite villains. After you. And of course, I'm going to be the one to start. Okay. My list pretty much is self-explanatory to anyone who's listened to our podcast. They already know who my number one is going to be, and that's okay. I guarantee we are not going to be three for three. There's no way we're going to be three for three on this so, one. So, my number five, and this comes as probably a shock considering who my number one is going to be, potentially, possibly, possibly. But my number five is Joker. You know, I'm not a huge sell on Joker. I like, you know, the only Joker that has ever stood out to me. Um, actually, there's two. One of them is a voice. The other is an actual actor, and that's Heath Ledger. You know, in The Dark Knight, obviously, really, really spoke out to me. And the other one, of course, is Mark Hamill as the voice of Joker in, you know, Arkham series. So that's, you know... The only ones that have really spoken out to me. Otherwise, I'm not really big on the whole, you know, um, Joker. Um, number four is Venom. And not the movie Venom. We're talking the comic book Venom where they actually do him a lot more justice. They make him into more of a villain and less of a little pansy. Um, number three is Penguin. I don't care whether it's comic books, movie, TV show. Penguin has always come across as this diabolical villain. And I've always enjoyed how they portray the villain. Um, obviously, in Gotham, they have done him perfectly. I, lo you know, I love the actor who has done the Penguin. 
I've never felt so much in touch with, with Penguin as I do in that series. So it's phenomenal. Um, number two, Poison Ivy. You know, this sexy, luscious, I'm going to kill you villain. You know, one single kiss and she can kill you. You know, pretty much speaks villain. But of course, my number one favorite villain is Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. You cannot go wrong with the I'm going to smash you with my hammer as I hit you with a bat villain. She, you know, I don't understand. Like, Joker, yes, is crazy, but Harley Quinn, I believe, takes it to a whole new maniacal level. Joker pretty much created Harley Quinn of how she is, and she has pretty much fallen in love with the idea of not just killing people, but torturing them to the point that they wish they were dead. Yeah, Harley Quinn's definitely a little psycho. A little. A I, little. I love it. I and honestly I, I mean, love little, her character. I mean, she, she's definitely full of piss and bitter. Yeah, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Harley Quinn um, in, in, in Suicide Squad. I, I cannot wait. Okay, uh, so we'll go to my uh, list. Number five, this one may seem a bit of an oddball. But my number five is Sabretooth, Wolverine's probably greatest villain. You can, if you don't believe, you know, agree with me, you can definitely argue, you know, hit me up on Twitter at that mask guy. But to me, you know, there was something about it. Specifically, I grew up watching uh, the Uncanny X Men cartoon series back in the early 1990s, and it was something I watched religiously every Saturday morning. And so I absolutely loved Sabretooth. Every time Sabretooth came on, it was great. I actually uh, was a you know teenager and actually had invented a um, mutant who was the uh, illegitimate son of of Sabretooth. That's how much I loved this character. And uh, you know, there's just something about. I mean, he has a lot of the same abilities Wolverine has. He's got that feral uh, instincts. He you know. Uh, has a healing factor very much like Wolverine's, and he's just a big badass. And then just there was something about that I just loved, and uh, I did enjoy what they did with him in either uh, X Men or in X Men Origins Wolverine. But I just absolutely loved the number four, and this is a po- is Apocalypse. Um, I just there's just something about you know Apocalypse that. You know, I love the, you know I love villains that feel that they're justified in their actions, and he wants to go off, and he wants to rule the world, and he wants mutants to be the you know to be there to side with him. So he's a strong believer in you know uh, survival of the fittest, and you'll know, surround himself with the most powerful mutants possible. And so there's just something about this. I mean, he's ageless. He's been around since the days of Egypt. He was the original mutant. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's just something about that. And maybe that's why I find what they're doing with him in, you know, the new X-Men movie so offensive. Why I'm, you know, insulted by the fact that he looks like a villain from the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers cartoon. Yes, or, yes. Well, seems cartoony. Number three, again, going back to, you know, people who I feel, you know, are justified in their, you know, who just, who have just reasons for what they do is Magneto. Um, if you're familiar with the, uh, you know, here's a mutant who was Jewish. He, he survived, you know, the concentration camps in Germany and he grew up in, you know, mutants and he sees what could possibly happen to the mutants and doesn't want to see the same genocide that, you know, his people went through happen to his other people, the mutants. And so, you know, everything he does is, you know, in his mind, it has just cause for doing it. What's interesting is in the Secret Wars, those motivations of his lead the Beyonder to actually placing him on the side of the X Men and the Avengers, because the event, you know, because you know, the Beyonder views his actions as being just, mm-hmm. 
And so, I mean, to me, it was an absolutely another great one. My number two is Catwoman. Now, as almost, I you know, she's one of those vil- people, and there's someone else on my uh, top favorite heroes list, which there is almost interchangeable between heroes and villains. There's something about it. I mean, to me, yo, know, I'm big into Catwoman. Catwoman, to me, is probably my favorite comic book villainess, heroine, whatever you want to call her. And, you know, just, you know, she's very sexy. And it's one of those things where she just, her charm, you know, really is awesome. And it's just, you know, she almost has Batman wrapped around her little finger. It's like, Batman always seems to be trying to, you know, you know, while he just wants to take out the other villains, he almost wants to save Selina. <laughs> Which I think is kind of funny, because then she goes off and uses that against him. And, you know, just Count, make time. Countless times. Countless times. You know, she ends up getting away, you know, and you can almost see that Batman, you know, actually kind of loves it, you know. There's a bit of course of game, he does. You know, and complete pun intended, there's definitely a bit of a cat and mouse game between these two. And Batman is the mouse. And number one on my list is the Joker. You know, as, uh... <laughs> as Alfred went off and kind of stayed there are in the uh, in the dark night there's just some people who want to see the world burn and that's what something that i like there's a certain aspect to the joker where you know he's probably the most chaotic villain out there this guy has gotten no true motivation other than causing chaos you know, I mean, he he goes off as much as he, he recognizes that he and Batman are literally two sides of the same coin. And, you know, there's just, all it would take is just one little slip, you know, Batman just crossing that line and they would be almost exactly the same. And, you know, there's just something, I and here's the thing, um, I've never been as horrified and at the same time, you know, enjoy, you know, the same aspects. I am t- thinking back to, you know, like the killing game where he goes off and shoots Barbara Gordon, who was secretly bad girl in the spine and she becomes paralyzed or what he does to Jason Taub in death in the family, where he goes off and kills him and you know, beats him with a wrench and then tries to blow him up. I mean, these things are, like, the ultimate in, like, villainous acts, and at the same time, I find them enjoying and enjoyable, and, you know, this was one villain. I was so happy in Dark Knight when they didn't kill off the the Joker only for, you know, life to actually do it. You know, Heath Ledger, to me, was the ultimate, you know, uh, portrayer uh, of this character, you know, Jack Nicholson was really over the top. I didn't like it. Cesar Romero, who actually uh, did uh, the Joker in the uh, 1960s cartoon, uh, well, just television series. Yo, yo, I, I don't know. It was a little cartoony, but when he was on, he was always my favorite villain on that show. And, yo, know, Mark Hamill, I'm sorry. I, all I have to do is, you know, hear Mark Hamill do, you know, he, you know, the Joker, and it brings a smile to my face. So, I mean, that's my top five list. Yo, know, we, we had some similarities, we, different rankings. Different rankings, absolutely. I completely understand Harley Quinn. You know, and I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just... Harley, to me, is so much of a tweener that I couldn't really put her on the list. And the Penguin, as much as I really enjoyed him... On you know his portrayal on Gotham, I don't really like him pretty much anywhere else. And then certain times, you know, the Penguin legitimately tries well to go legitimate. So I had a hard time, you know, putting him on my list. But you put Catwoman. I put Catwoman, <laughs> and again, that's the tweener. And this goes back to you know my top five heroes list. And there's someone that on that list who could almost be you know two sides of the same coin as well on there. 
Um, so I'm just going to jump right into my top five list of heroes. Which I believe will be our 